Imagine a soldier on the battlefield, meticulously trained to defend against every visible threat. They know how to wield their weapons, avoid deadly ambushes, and outmaneuver the enemy. They understand their foe's tactics and are prepared for every physical danger. In our everyday lives, we are similarly vigilant. We lock our doors at night, safeguard our families, and protect our loved ones from visible harm. We excel in defending against what we can see and touch. But what about the unseen battles? Many of us are ill-equipped to recognize and combat the spiritual wars raging around us. We focus on the physical conflicts while the real struggle happens in a dimension beyond our sight. Paul, in Ephesians, warns us that evil and the devil first attack us in the spiritual realm. These attacks, though invisible, eventually manifest in our physical world. By the time we notice them, the true battle has already been lost. We're left fighting the aftermath, the visible consequences rather than the unseen enemy. But what about the unseen battles? Many of us are ill-equipped to recognize and combat the spiritual wars raging around us. We focus on the physical conflicts while the real struggle happens in a dimension beyond our sight. Paul, in Ephesians, warns us that evil and the devil first attack us in the spiritual realm. These attacks, though invisible, eventually manifest in our physical world. By the time we notice them, the true battle has already been lost. We're left fighting the aftermath, the visible consequences rather than the unseen enemy. In Ephesians, Paul is preparing the church for a battle, painting a vivid picture of a fight that feels almost tangible. He uses the imagery of the most formidable military force of his time, the Roman army, to detail the spiritual armor we need. When under assault from the enemy, it's crucial to know how to defend yourself. You must learn to combat loneliness, resist temptation, and endure persecution and trials. In Ephesians 6 verses 11 to 18, Paul instructs us to put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. Stand firm then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. Paul's message is clear. Equip yourself with spiritual armor, stand firm with truth, righteousness, and the gospel of peace. Defend yourself with faith, salvation, and the word of God. And above all, stay vigilant in prayer. This spiritual armor ensures that you are prepared not just for physical struggles, but for the unseen battles that challenge your faith and spirit. Notice how it mentions the wiles of the devil, or the devil's schemes, this implies that the devil has a deliberate plan and strategy to defeat us. The good news is that God doesn't leave us defenseless. The belt of truth resembles the sturdy leather belt that held a Roman soldier's sword. Together with the metal breastplate, it protected the soldier's vital organs. Roman soldiers also wore sandals with metal cleats embedded in the soles, providing traction to stand firmly without slipping during battle. Equipped for combat, a Roman soldier carried a large shield. This shield not only protected him, but also those around him, as Romans never fought alone, but always as a cohesive unit, using their shields in close coordination to safeguard each other. A Roman soldier's helmet was arguably the most critical piece of armor, covering most of the head and parts of the face. Finally, the Roman soldier wielded a double-edged sword, effective for both defense and offense. This comprehensive armor allowed Roman soldiers to face their enemies with confidence, ready for any attack. For Christians, our belt of truth upholds our faith. It's the truth that is found in the gospel. It's God's truth that upholds us when the enemy launches lies and false doctrine against us. 
When the enemy makes you question God's goodness, his forgiveness of your sins or your assurance of your eternal salvation, we can reject those lies. The next piece of armor is the breastplate of righteousness. It's not our righteousness, but it's Jesus' righteousness that saves us from our sins and assures us of salvation. It's his promise that once saved, we are sealed by God and are forever his. We can never be plucked from his hand. To stand against the enemy's attacks, you need the sandals of peace with the preparation of the gospel of peace, the preparation that is the study. You not only need to stand against attacks, but show yourself approved to proclaim the gospel of peace, to battle the enemy by bringing the good news of salvation through Jesus Christ. For kingdoms change when men's hearts change. Above all, we are told to take up the shield of faith. So, when the devil attacks with fiery arrows, your faith acts as a shield, a shield that does not allow anything past it, a faith that keeps your emotions stable, stability that will make you less prone to emotional swings or becoming fearful. Your faith will not allow the enemy's lies, their threats or the problem or crisis to control you. When the devil attacked Jesus in the wilderness with lies, Jesus replied to each temptation by referring to God's word by saying, it is written. Every attack by the devil was met with the truth of God. But if you don't know God's word or lack trust in it, then you will succumb easily to the attacks of the devil. You will believe what you hear from the enemy, in the news or from the world. Don't believe those lies, but rather respond with the word of God. Lastly, we are told to protect our mind with the helmet of salvation. Salvation that you know that you are saved. Not that you are perfect, but saved that once saved, we are transformed daily. It's a process, and even though we continue to sin, we are being remade to resemble Him. And with that assurance of your salvation, take up the sword of the Spirit. The only offensive weapon that we have is the Word of God. It's the Word that is uttered by the Spirit within us when we pray. And this is the most important aspect of Paul's instructions here in Ephesians. That is, he tells us that after we have put all this armor, we are to pray. Pray in the Spirit. Pray on all occasions. Pray with all kinds of prayers and requests. That is how we use this armor and weapon to win. It's prayer that brings it all together. It's prayer that wins a spiritual battle. Notice that Paul even continues to emphasize prayer in verse 18. Be on alert and pray for all the Lord's people, not just yourself, your loved ones, your family, but your brothers and sisters anywhere in the world who are fighting the good fight. This command is something only you can fulfill. You can't rely on a four-hour blessing video or an eight-hour audio track playing while you sleep. It's not about magic or mere words. It's a promise, but it's a promise that requires your personal commitment. You need to study the word, actively practice your faith, and pray to win the battle. Verse 18 emphasizes the importance of praying in the Spirit, meaning that the Spirit will empower your prayers. The Holy Spirit within us will present our prayers to God, but you must take the initiative to pray. As stated in Romans 8, this is a spiritual battle, and spiritual warfare must be fought in the Spirit, not in the flesh. You cannot prevail under spiritual attack without prayer. The moment you slack off in prayer, that's when Satan attacks and gains ground. Without prayer, there is no power. You can't defend against the devil. He knows you better than you know yourself. He knows how to defeat us, but through the power of prayer, we can defeat him. The devil may be telling you that praying is a waste of time. He may be whispering to you, you don't need to talk to God. You don't have the time or just stop that foolishness. You better believe that the devil would rather that we don't seek God in prayer and instead rely on ourselves because that's when he can defeat us. The result of putting on the full armor of God equips us for the battle. You're already in the battle, even if you know it or not. So you might as well be properly prepared, not only defend what is yours, but to take the fight to the enemy. We see evil prevailing today because so many of God's people have decided not to participate in the ultimate battle. If we can't fight for what is right and holy, what kind of believer are we really? So many of God's people have hidden themselves out of fear and removed themselves both physically and spiritually from the battle. But as God's people, we are called by Jesus in Matthew chapter 5, verse 13, to be salt of the earth. 
That's God's call for his followers to be part of preserving and influencing our countries and cultures for good. But what good is salt if it can't hold back the decay? This message is meant to uplift you. You need to be dressed for the spiritual season we're in. Just as you know how to dress for the weather, whether it's 105 degrees or minus 20, you should also know how to dress for the spiritual climate. Do we not see the signs of the times? We all notice that something significant is happening around us, but we often don't know how to respond. We find ourselves seeing the increase in evil, the attacks on free speech. We see the corruption of once trusted institutions and churches under attack. We see wickedness being celebrated and evil empowered and emboldened, and we are shocked how quickly these things are happening around us. Will we sit silently while evil succeeds? Friends, God has called us for a time such as this. For the season we are in, God has told us how to dress. So be dressed in the whole armor of God. He did not intend for you to go through this period of time, this season, and freeze, or be overcome by the heat. So, put on the full armor of the Lord. A good way to start defending yourself against spiritual attacks is to start every morning before you rise out of your bed with a short prayer. You thank God for a good night's sleep, and even if you didn't have a good night's sleep, you thank Him for being able to open your eyes and lift your head. You thank Him for what you do have and not what you don't have. You rest and place your peace and trust in His power and His will. God bless you all.